Stay home, stay healthy, stay safe, and remember, stay with us. Yes, we're here, Chris Sheeran and Jim Spinarco once again. Hey, it's our second time. It's like we're hosting Saturday Night Live for the second time, Jim. We're, we're two-time hosts now. We, we got to get to the Tom Hanks level of five-time hosts and, and forward. I, Chris, I just hope they're not hoping that we go through a comedy routine right here. <laughs> then we are really in big trouble if that's what, if that's what we're trying to match up to. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not going to do a comedy routine, but we are going to talk a little NBA basketball because sure. I, I have to be honest with you, Jim. I, I truly miss being in the studio and, and being in Bob Lorenz's office and eating all of his candy and talking <laughs> NBA basketball with you. I learn so much about the game sitting there with you, and, and I hope we can learn from each other today, too, on, on what we're about to talk about, and that's potentially bringing this league back and right. hopefully – finishing somewhat of the regular season, maybe an abridged version of it, and then a playoff run. But in order for that to happen, Jim, it was just reported on ESPN a couple days ago, they're looking at this 25-day plan. The first 11 days will be just individual workouts, followed by 14 days, two weeks of the team getting together. What are your thoughts on that? And do you think generally overall it could work? Well, I think the first thing you have to address, Chris, I think when I think of that is think about Adam Silver and all the people behind the NBA closed doors that are trying to figure out whatever it's going to be. Let's assume it's going to be this 25-day program. Just all the moving parts that have to take place in order to get that to function properly, right? Let's If you just took the Brooklyn Nets and tried to think about just them and figure out how do we move them wherever we're going to move them, how do we get our players to do that 11-day program to get ready to play and then a 14-day training camp. Just moving the Nets organization around and their players, I think, is a big, big challenge under the, you know, in today's environment with the virus that we have to deal with. If they can figure that all out, um, I think there are some positives to it, and I think there are some, you know, negatives to it. And the positives, obviously, are, uh, that the fans get to see some basketball on television, right? The other part of it is the quick negative is, well, what do you do with teams? Are they ready to play? What kind of play will there be? Will there be injuries? So there's a lot of moving parts, both on the positive and the negative. I, and I know you're the same way, we're two guys who love the sport, who want to talk about the sport, who want to watch the sport. So push that aside because that's a given in terms of the conversation, I think, in terms of how much we want the, uh, the leagues to begin. And not just, you know, not just basketball, go across the board. You know, we went golf, we went Major League Baseball, we went hockey to resume everything. We went all worlds back, but still a lot of moving parts on the, in my uh, opinion right now. You're talking about an entire league that maybe hasn't really been able to do basketball type activities. Yep. Is a month long enough to, to bring that back? Normally, I would say, yes, Chris, a month is fine because that's basically what training camp is, right? It's about a month, give or take, when you're getting ready. The major difference, though, is that most guys spend the prior two, three, four months before training camp getting ready for training camp and having their bodies. You know, you're not walking into training camp anymore, not that you did 20, 30, 40 years ago. You know, after sitting off from the last season, not doing anything for four or five months and walking in and thinking you're going to compete and start fresh okay, I haven't done anything in four months. I'm going to come to training camp and see if I can figure this out. That doesn't happen. Guys get prepared before training camp. So to your point with guys, and it's not a knock, they're sitting around for the most part, relatively speaking, not getting their workouts in because they don't have the capabilities. Now, even if so, some of them have, you know, in-home gyms. How many have in-home gyms that they can do that? How many guys have bikes and treadmills that they can keep a little on the sharp side? I always think of it from the standpoint, your conditioning won't be as great when they do this program for basketball activities up and down. But my bigger concern is not my conditioning, whether I'm out of breath after I go up and down the floor a bunch of times, it's those lower body joint injuries that I would be concerned with because your body's not ready to really play at that level under those circumstances. So I would be concerned about the ankles, the Achilles, the knee problems, you know, maybe even the hip problems in terms of what you're doing, uh, in terms of the play. So there are, once again, some concerns from an injury standpoint, because, you know, as, as you know, if you and I are playing, trying to play, in my case, a pickup basketball game right now, which I would not do, if I see the ball rolling five feet away from me, 
my mind tells me that I can go get that ball because it's instinctive. Right. But the rest of me is like, <laughs> hold on, buddy. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore, right? So that's the kind of concept because all of these guys, the pros, they're competitive. They get their juices flowing. They may try to do just more than their bodies are ready to do at that particular point. What do you think the quality of the play would be like if we did see the NBA come back after this 25-day plan? You know, that's, that's a difficult one. I, I think it would be less than, uh, you know, it'd be right about late training camp type of play, I think, in the first week or two. Depending on how they did it, we wouldn't know what kind of schedule or what kind of play out, uh, play out, playoff formats would be there. I just think the, the overall level of play would be diminished because these guys would not be on the top of their game. I think it's not, you know, not going out on a limb to say, oh, you know what, if they start up June 1st and May May 1st is their 25-day period of time and June 1st is the first start up to the season, whatever that becomes, I think it's only natural that these guys would not be on top of their games. I'd be concerned about, you know, the extra injuries and the fact that who's going to be playing up to their caliber of, of play. But, you know, it, it does make for an interesting thought, too, is if you had a playoff system of some sort, like right now, you know, if the, if the 62 games, the Nets hypothetically are trying to avoid somebody in the playoffs. Everybody was trying to avoid Milwaukee. Maybe you take a shot at Milwaukee right now because you don't know what they're like. You don't know what Giannis has been doing. You don't know anything about what the Bucks are doing. So I think it, in a sense, it throws everything into a, a big raffle bag and you pull numbers out and who knows, you might get lucky. Well, that's the thing I was going to ask you next. How dangerous would that be for teams that were at the highest level and right. teams that, you know, they were trying. So, you know, you look at the Lakers, you look at the Bucks. Th this could be like a one and done situation for them if their fitness level isn't at the same as maybe the eight seed. Maybe, who knows, maybe the eight seed was working harder uh, at their home court or in their home gym. Who knows what would happen in a playoff system yeah. like that? You know, I, I think what it does, Chris, it, it kind of, to me, it, it may not totally even the playing field. You know, when you go into the playoffs, right, the number one seed versus the number eight, probabilities will say, and the odds will say, that the number one is going to win that series, most likely. Now, all of a sudden, there's a compression, if you will, because the number one, is it, are they really a number one, or would they, if you, if you somehow tried to figure out where everybody's, what everybody's been doing for the last two or three months with this whole virus situation, is one still that clear-cut favorite or not? Or is the eight eighth place team moved up a little bit because maybe some of their guys have been conditioning a little bit better and you somehow are figuring it out. So I think there's a compression, which would make it very interesting for the fans. I think it would make it very interesting for the players also because, yeah, there's, there's no lock that the Bucks and the Lakers are going to be in the finals, you know, if you will. Jim, it's always a pleasure. I wish we were in person. I, I wish we were in studio doing the pre-half and post-game shows and the Nets were still playing basketball right now. Yep. I everything was still around but if this is all we can do uh, i'm a happy person because it's just nice to see your face nice to hear your voice thanks for the time once again partner i appreciate it you bet chris same here and uh just hang in there everybody it's going to get better sooner or later and we'll uh we're a strong country so we'll make things happen and it's uh just going to take a little time i think and a big thank you from both of us obviously to all the frontline workers you know who you are we couldn't be getting through this without you yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, I have, you know, my son-in-law and daughter-in-law, a couple of nieces are on the front line in hospitals and nursing homes, and uh, you, you pray for them every single day they go to work, but they're going to work. You, are, you and I are sitting in the confines of our homes right now, and the frontliners are out there doing this work. So, uh, yeah, so from all of us and you and everybody at the Yes Network, thank you very much for all what you're doing.